Hello viewers, so welcome back to the course on matrix computation and its application. So in the previous lecture, we have discussed some applications of the linear algebra. So today we are going further for that one. So let us start with this. <coughs> so today I uh, want to give you one definition of the basis. So as we already know that if suppose a linearly independent spanning set for a vector space that V is called a basis of the vector space V. So it is the linearly independent spanning set. It should be linear independent and it should be a spanning set also. So that definition we already know. So now based on this one, I want to write characterization of a basis. So what are the characteristics of a basis? Now suppose let u be a subspace of a of a vector space say rm and let i take a set beta that contains the elements b1, b2 up to bm and they are belongs to the subspace u, then then the following statements are equivalents. So in this case we are taking the u as a subspace and we are taking the vector space rm the m dimensional vector space and let i take the set beta which contain the vectors b1 b2 uh, bn so this is the n number of vectors and that are contained in the given subspace u then the following statements are equivalent so the first one is that beta is a basis of u second one beta is a minimal spanning set for u and the third one is that beta is a maximal linearly independent subset of u. So all these three statements are equivalent. So suppose I just take this one. So now this can be discussed. Now we have a beta. So beta is containing the elements b1, b2 b n. Okay, so that we are taking n number of vectors and I know that the v is the dimension of v that is equal to m in this case. Now if I say that the beta is a basis of v implies that, that the set beta is linearly independent because these are the basis and u is spanned by beta or I can say that this is spanned by the vectors b1, b2 up to b. So then it becomes the basis. Now the next thing says that beta is a minimal spanning set for u. It means if 
if I say that beta is a minimal spanning set for u. It means that there cannot be a smaller set which contains the vectors less than n can be a spanning set for u, which implies that there does not exist any set having vectors less than n which 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 are the basis for u less than n means suppose n is 5 so i cannot have a the set which is less than 5 and which is also the basis for the vector u so this is the statement about the minimal spanning set so this can be just can be seen that suppose let us go by contradiction and we can prove this one that so let us go by contradiction so let beta is not a minimal spanning set for u which implies there exist another set say alpha such that so if it is not a minimal spanning set it means there is another set alpha such that that alpha such that the number of vectors in alpha are l i and and also spans u and of course if it is a minimal spanning set alpha is a minimal spanning set then also that this number of uh, vectors will be less than or maybe I should take it should be it can be less than n because it is if it is not the minimal it means alpha is the minimal and uh, if alpha is the minimal then it definitely it can contain the vector less than n numbers and which are also linearly independent and spans u. Now, alpha contains n number of linear independent vectors. So, from here what you are getting that beta is also one of the uh, basis for u and alpha is also one of the basis for u and which having the less than number of less uh, uh, which has the vectors uh, number of vector less than n. So, which implies that so this things is which is not possible because if it uh, if I say so this can be seen that if I say that the dimension of u is n then its basis definitely should contain the n number of elements. But here if it is a I take alpha as a minimal spanning set less than beta then it contain the vector less than n. So which is not possible. So from here we can say that this is the minimal spanning set. So this uh, way we can uh, prove this thing. So, which implies that beta is a minimal spanning set 
for you. Now the same way we can discuss the third one. So, third one says that beta is a maximal linearly independent subset of u. So, it is the maximal linearly independent subset. It can we cannot have a subset of u which contain the linearly independent vector having more numbers than this set beta. So, let us uh, prove this one. So, let us do this one. So, we go by the contradiction. Let beta is not a maximal linearly independent subset of u. So, it is not the maximal linearly independent set. It means that suppose I have a set S which contain the elements uh, maybe I can take the elements as uh, V 1, V 2 up to V n, V n plus 1 or maybe V k. So, it contains the k number of vectors and S is linearly independent. It means the vectors are linearly independent. So, it means that I am considering that beta is not the maximal linearly independent subset of u. So, if it is not the maximal linearly independent of u, I take the another set S which contain the linearly independent vector which are in number k that is more than the n. So, here I am taking that the k is more than n. Now, we already know so, if it is a maximal which implies, so if it is not the maximal this is the maximal. Now, from here I can say that from here I can say that the uh, set S is linearly independent and it also spans u. So, which implies that S is a basis for u. Now, if it is a basis for u, but we already know that the, the dimension of u, but but we know that 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 basis of u cannot have more elements more vectors cannot have more vectors then the dimension of u because if u is a n dimensional then its basis cannot have a more uh, vectors n in numbers. So, which implies that but k is greater than n. So, from here I can say that since k is greater than n which implies that the set the set s cannot be linearly independent because it is a if it is a basis containing n elements we know that the more elements than n will be linearly dependent so which is a contradiction So, which implies that the given set is the maximal set. So, so that shows that beta is the maximal linearly independent subset of the vector spa, uh, subspace Q.
now after that <coughs> we also know one of the another definition we know that the dimension of a vector space v is number of vectors in its basis. So, that we already know. So, based on this one I want to discuss one theorem. Let u be a subspace let u be a subspace of a vector space v so we are talking about uh, finite dimensions finite dimensions vector space so let u be the subspace of the vector space v then dimension of u will be always less than dimension of p because u is a subspace of v and and if dimension of u is equal to dimension of v so that implies that u will be equal to this one so this is the another important theorem now this one we can uh, see very clearly since u is a subspace of v so i can say that u is a proper subset of v that is u is proper subset of v i am considering that it is not equal to v which implies that there exist some elements v such that such some elements v such that v belongs to capital v belongs to the vector space and does not belongs to the given subspace u it means dimension of u has to be less than dimension of u because i get a one vector which is not belongings to the given subspace it means that the basis of u cannot be cannot span the entire v because v is a one vector i found which is containing in the given subspace u and which is not in the v so that implies the dimension of u is equal uh, less than equal to dimension of v also if dimension of u is equal to dimension of v which implies that number of vectors in basis of u is equal to number of vectors in basis of v and we know that the if v is a n dimensional vector space then it all the bases will contain n number of vector so which implies that this is possible only when u is equal to v so from here i can say that the dimensions are same then the set u and v will be same so this is another important term of it now there is another theorem we want to discuss that is called extension theorem so 
So, in the extension theorem basically what we are going let, let the set I take a set which contain elements v 1, v 2 up to v k. So, let the set which contains k elements be a linearly independent subset of an n dimensional vector space v then we can find we can find vectors that is v k plus 1 v k plus 2 v up to n in V such that the set now I take the set V 1 V 2 up to V k V k plus 1 V k plus 2 up to V n is a basis for vector space v. It means if I have a vector space n dimensional vector space and in that vector space if I get a set of vectors k number of vectors which definitely k is less than n then we can extend these vectors because these are linearly independent. So, I can extend these vectors to the n numbers such that it become the basis for the vector space v. So, in that case it will be a linearly independent as well as it will span the whole V. So, this is the extension theorem. So, this theorem we will use in future for the extension of the basis. Now, I want to discuss a very important theorem that if u and w are two subspaces of a of a vector space V that is finite dimensional, then dimension of U plus w is equal to dimension of u plus dimension of w minus dimension of u intersection w. So, in this way we can find out the directly the dimension of u plus w because we already know that u intersection w is also a subspace of v that we already know and we also know that u plus w is also a subspace of v. So, that two things we already know. So, this condition will be hold. So, let us do the proof for this one. So, let I take that let first I assume that the let dimension of u I just take m dimension of w I will take p and dimension of u intersection w I will assume r and dimension of v I will assume that is n. Now, of course, m p r definitely it will be less than equal to n because it is a subspace. So, definitely it will be dimension will be less than equal to n. Now, I will take that let I will take a set v 1, v 2 up to v r 
B A basis for the subspace U intersection W, which implies that U intersection W is a spanned by this one and these are linearly independent. Now, so I just call this set maybe I will call S. Now, we know that that S belongs to U and S also belongs to W because these vectors will all definitely be lie in the U also and W also because they are belonging to the intersection. Now, from here, so the set S, so this is the set which contain the R number of vectors can be extended to the basis of U, because this set also belongs to U, but I can extend with the help of extend, uh, extension theorem, I can make the basis of U. So, let, so let I take the set V 1, V 2 up to V r, V r plus 1, V r plus 2, V m. So, I will take or I should instead of V, I will take them as a U. So, let us take U. and u m. So, this is B A basis for u. Now, since S also belongs to w, so which applies using extension theorem. So, using extension theorem, we can extend the set S to a basis of vector space subspace W. So, which implies I can have a vector the set of vector v 1, v 2 up to v r and then I can write w r plus 1, w r plus 2 up to w r. So, it goes up to p. So, it is p. So, now is a basis for w. Now, we construct a set. So, I construct a set suppose I write A and that set contain the element V 1, V 2, V r, U r plus 1, U r plus 2 up to U m and W r plus 1, W r plus 2, W p so, we construct the set containing all the linearly independent vectors such that, so let we construct a set this and if we, we are able to show that first thing is that A is L i linearly independent and the second one is A spans u plus w then, then 
we can claim we can say that A is a basis of U plus W and contains so it contains R plus M minus R plus P minus R. So, that become basically M plus P minus R elements. So, these things will be there. So, now we need to show that A is linearly independent and A spans the whole U plus W. Now, so let us prove first one. We need to show that A is linearly independent. So, this one we need to show. So, from here I will write I will take the linear combination of the elements this which implies that suppose I take alpha 1 summation I take alpha i and v i i from 1 to r plus summation beta i u i i is moving from r plus 1 to m plus summation i from r plus 1 to p alpha beta gamma i w i suppose I take the linear combination for this one. So, I take the linear combination. So, this is the linear combination. So, we need to show that alpha i's, beta i's and gamma i's all are 0. So, that we need to show. Now, from here I can write this as summation i from 1 to r alpha i v i plus i from r plus 1 to m beta i u i can be written as minus sign with gamma i w i r plus 1 to p and let this is equal to v some v I just did. It means I am taking this as a vector v. Now, from here I can say that v is a is can be written as a is a linear combination of vectors in u because v i and u i are the basis for the subspace u and taking this linear combination I am getting the value phi. So, which implies that v belongs to u the spanning of u basically it is u. Also, V is minus summation R plus 1 to P gamma I W I, which implies that V is also can be written as a linear combination of W i's. So, it means that V also belongs to W. Now, from here, if V belongs to W, then which implies that V also belongs to U intersection W. So, if belongs to U intersection W implies that V can be written as some linear combination delta I V I I from 
1 to r because these are the bases v i are the bases for u intersection w. So, now from here I can write that so v is already this one. So, from here I can write that minus summation gamma i w i i from r plus 1 to p is equal to summation i from 1 to r delta i v i <coughs> and from here I can write that summation delta i v i i from 1 to r plus summation gamma i w i i is moving from r plus 1 to p equal to 0. So, now it is a v i and w i already we know that they are the basis for w. So, from here it is very easy to check that it means that delta i and w i all are 0 for all i because the set v 1, v 2, v r and w r plus 1 up to w p is a basis is basis for w. So, from here all the delta i's and w i becoming 0. So, if delta i and w i becoming 0 then from here so I just uh, can give the name of this uh, equation. So, let us write it is 1 then from equation 1 we get so now gamma i is became 0 oh sorry this uh, not w this is gamma. So, gamma is became 0. So, this gamma became 0. So, from here I will get that summation i from 1 to r alpha i v i plus summation i from r plus 1 to m beta i and u i that became 0. Now, this is already if we put equal to 0 which implies that all alpha i's and beta i's are 0 for all i because this set v 1, v 2 up to v r u r plus 1 up to u m is linearly independent that we already know because it is a basis. So, from here we can say that which implies that the set A is linearly independent. So, this is we are able to show that A is linearly independent. Now, we need to show that A spans u plus w. So, it is very easy to show. Now, so second one we need to show. So, now we need to show that A spans u plus w. Now, let I take element z belongs to u plus w which implies I can write z as some element u plus some w and which again because if it is in the u I can write this as a linear combination i from 1 to r some a i's into v i's because i from r plus 1 to m b i and u i 
because this is the basis for this one plus similarly I can write this one as I from 1 to R A B. So, I can write as C I V I plus summation I from R plus 1 to P some D I and W I because this element W belongs to W and this U belongs to U. So, U can be written as a linear combination of this one and W can be written as a linear combination of this one. So, after writing this one I can from here I can say that which implies because this can be combined. So, I can write that Z becomes equal to so this summation I can write as I from 1 to R A i plus C i I can take common V i plus the remaining B i U i plus the remaining D i W i and which is if you see that is the linear combination of the vectors of A. So, which implies that Z belongs to the span of A. So, from here we can see that Z belongs to the span of A. It means that I started with a Z from U. So, I from here I can write that U plus W is a contained in span A. Also, because A is a definitely contain the elements the vectors and all vectors are coming from uh, u plus w. So, also I can say that A span is subset of u plus w because I can take the element A from the span of A and that can be shown with this that that belongs to u plus A. So, from here I can using this and this condition I can say that u plus w is equal to the span of A. So, it means from here I can say that A is a basis for u plus w. Now, if it is a basis of w, u plus w then definitely I can check that the dimension of u plus w is so we have shown this one that it contains m plus p minus r elements is m plus p minus r so that is equal to dimension of u plus dimension of w minus dimension of u intersection w so that is the proof of the given theorem so now we'll stop here so, today we have uh, discussed very important theorem that the dimension of u plus w that is a subspace of a, of a given vector space v that is equal to the dimension of u plus dimension of v minus the dimension of their intersection. So, I hope you have enjoyed this one. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks very much.